Not long ago, I submitted an account of some odd happenings at the school I teach at. I mentioned that I saw shadow people in the hallways and that the school is in a really bad area which has a lot of shootings and murders. This is an update of some other things that have happened since. I continue to see shadow people around the school but have tried to ignore them until the other day. I have two big bookshelves next to each other towards the back of my classroom. There is a small space between them, and on the first week of school, my students would try to get in between them until I told them that that was not allowed. They are in kindergarten. None of them have attempted it since. I had the students on the carpet teaching a math lesson when I looked up and I saw a boy that I had never seen before sitting in the space between the bookcase. I don't remember much about the details, except he had these huge eyes that were just staring at me. I stared back for a second, then looked at my students just to make sure none of them had wandered off, but when I looked back at the bookcase, the boy was gone. My students saw me staring at something, so they turned around and asked why I was staring. Not wanting to scare them, I just said, oh, I thought something fell off the wall. It was really creepy. A few days later, I once again saw the kiddos at the carpet teaching reading. I had a boy in time out, in a chair near the bookshelf. Suddenly, I saw a shadow dash across the room, right through the boy in time out, and then through the wall behind the bookcase and into the class next door. I will say right out. It was not a car driving by. My classroom is very far from the street, and there is a portable classroom covering my class from the street. It was not a person because the shades were open, and since my carpet area with the kids is near the window, I would have seen and heard footsteps if someone was walking by. This thing I saw floated in. I would say maybe it was my imagination, except one of my students saw it too. She started screaming and saying it's a ghost, it's a ghost, and it went right through Ben, which is not his real name. Well, Ben got up in a panic and the rest of the kids started to really freak out. The girl kept saying that the ghost was a man and that he was going to return. I did not make out if the shadow I saw was a man or not. All I saw was a shadow, but it was obvious she saw more. Then she screamed out, there he is! All I saw was a little bit of gray movement by the bookcase. Then at recess, she kept saying that there were ghosts on the playground, but I think she could have just been imagining it at that point. In any regards, this poor little girl was very scared. I even had her parents calling me asking why their kids were so shaken up. Later after school, I was in my classroom alone when the security alarm in the classroom next door started going off. The teacher had left already and her room was locked. The security company came and said that the system sensed movement in there, and that's why it went off, and asked if I had gone into the classroom for any reason. I said no, that I had been in my room the entire time. Then suddenly, my alarm started going off for no reason while the security people were there. They could not turn it off and were all baffled by what was going on. It had worked great up until that moment. I have no idea what's going on at this school, but it is creepy. The fact that the students saw the shadow ghost also tells me that there is something there. I just wish I knew if it was good or bad. I don't interact with it, and I just ignore it when I see it. While I was in Seattle, Washington for a pageant, my mom booked us a room at the Hamilton Hotel. We had just gotten back from competition and we were craving junk food. We went to the front desk and asked the woman if she had any junk food machines. She said, no, but we have a pop machine way down at the end of the hall. So my mom and I went to get some pop. The elevators you would normally take there a long distance from the pop machines, and 
There was a service elevator a few doors down from us. So we took the service elevator. This elevator was old. When the doors opened, there was an old chair resting in the corner of it. I thought, the maids use this elevator. Someone must have left it or something. When you walk in, you feel this feeling that just makes you uncomfortable. At the same time, you're a little freaked out because you're in an old elevator with a rusty old chair. I turned to my mom and said, I bet you someone is sitting in that chair. After that, nothing was quite the same. The feelings began to get stronger and the elevator doors wouldn't open. The light showed that we were on our floor, which was the third floor, so it wasn't that long of a ride. Then I said, I bet this thing is haunted. As soon as I said that, the voice spoke. It sounded as if it was from an old radio, and it sounded like it was on top of the elevator. Yet, it felt like it was right in my ear. The voice sounded like it was from another time, though. I can't quite describe it, but it was freaky. It laughed in a low, uncomfortable voice. My mom and I ran to the doors, and the doors opened, and we were out of there. My brother didn't believe us, but now I'm an even better believer. I told two of my pageant friends about this, and they replied, let's go check it out. I was hesitant, but I still went. It still felt uneasy. Not a good feeling. It didn't feel evil. It felt depressing and sad. Then at other times, it felt creepy happy. The chair wasn't in the elevator, and my friends were too scared to talk, so it didn't reply. I think it was us talking to it that caused it to want to reply to us. This was my first experience, and I was not too happy about it. It still gives me chills to this day when I think about the weird things and sometimes frightening experiences my family had in that old apartment. The units were originally built to house military families until the housing authority took them over. When my father and I did a walkthrough before we moved in, I was overcome with sadness and I started crying in my father's car. I told him that I didn't like it there. I was a young mother at the time, had to get out of my previous situation, and there was no space at my father's, so there was no other choice. It was the only thing I could afford at the time, so I sucked it up, moved in, and here we are, alone for the first time. Just baby and me. The first thing that happened was when I would come home from work, the living room window would always be open. I thought it was strange, but didn't put too much thought into it until it started happening almost every day. Then, my daughter didn't want to sleep in her room. She was young, so I put it off as her just wanting to be close to mommy. Then, one night, I got an uneasy feeling sleeping in my room upstairs. So baby and I slept in the living room on the couch. We had an old answering machine, and it went off by itself. Now, naturally, trying to keep a cool head, I thought the ringer on the phone must just be off. So I walked over there and picked up the phone and saw that the ringer is on. Then it went on over and over again. The TV clicked on and off several times, and I screamed at the top of my lungs, Get out of here now! This is my place! Then, things were quiet for a long time. When my husband moved in, we had our son. We had some things starting to pick up again. One particular experience was so scary we decided to move. By this time, my daughter was older and sleeping in the room. She got used to the weird things that would happen from time to time. 
When we started putting my son in the room to sleep, he would scream until we came and got him. One night when he was a little older, I had laid him down to sleep in his bed with his sister. My husband was working late and it was just the kids and I. I was on the phone talking and all of a sudden I hear my son screaming and bumping on the wall. I run to grab the door to the kids' room, and as I open the door, I swear to you, I see my son's arm pinned in mid-air and his little feet dangling. My daughter was horrified. Whatever it was dropped my son, and I ran over to him and picked him up. I was so scared that we all slept in my room that night and said a prayer. The next morning, my son was saying his back hurt, and when I pulled up his shirt, I saw two fang teeth marks on his back. I told my husband and we had my son blessed by a priest and he gave us some holy water, which we used to bless the house. Things did quiet down a little after that, but I was determined to find a new place. We stayed there another six months before we were able to find another place. And about two months before we were all packed up and out, things started up again. These things, although creepy, weren't horrifying. Just things like the doors closing by themselves, hearing the stairs creaking like someone's walking on them, when we were all in bed. Then, two weeks before we were to turn in the keys, we were sleeping, and I woke up because I felt something land on me. And it was a shirt that I had folded earlier and placed in a packing box. Our clothes were thrown out of the box. On the very last day before we left, I was checking the entire apartment, making sure we didn't miss anything. When I got to the room where my children stayed, just looking at everything, I was staring at the windows thinking that they're going to charge us almost all of the deposit to clean up all my children's stickers off the window. And from the corner of my eye, I swear I saw a man or something's face through the wall. When I turned to look at it, it was gone. It looked like it had fangs. Throughout my life, I've had many experiences. Two of my stories so far are a black figure on my ceiling and a Ouija board and black lab. I used to live in Sacramento, California for almost my whole life. This story will be about family camping trip to Omec, Washington when I was 17 years old. Throughout our drive for our camping trip to Omec, Washington, my mom felt sick. By the time we reached Omec, Washington, I couldn't wait to explore our campground. I was so excited. We were camping at an Indian reservoir. My mom was feeling sick, so I helped out the family with setting up and starting dinner. After we cleaned up and every one of my family members got ready for bed, my siblings didn't want to sleep in the tent, so they decided to sleep in the van. I have three older sisters and one younger brother. I decided to sleep with my parents in the tent. Well, that night after everyone fell asleep, for some strange reason, I couldn't sleep. I kept tossing and turning in my sleeping bag. For some reason, I kept on hearing a water stream running. And it was so loud I couldn't sleep. And keep in mind, there was a creek about half a mile away. And why did it sound like it was right beside my ear? I turned to lay on my right side, back facing my parents when all of a sudden I had the strangest feeling. My behind started getting really cold. I started getting goosebumps. So I decided to turn my head to look towards my parents' direction. And that's when I saw it. There was a Native American dressed like they would in the old days, squatting right behind me. He had some kind of feather flap that covered him below the waist. Long black hair, white line markings below his eyes, and some sort of band around his head. And he wore a leather necklace pouch around his neck. He was just sitting there staring at me. 
I was so scared I took my sleeping bag and covered my head. I think it must have been five or ten minutes before I decided to remove it off my head. I looked, and he was gone. So I know I saw a ghost. I forced myself to fall asleep. The next morning, I overheard my parents talking. My mom was telling my dad of a strange dream she had. She told him, I dreamt of an Indian medicine man last night. And my dad said, oh yeah, what happened in your dream? And my mom said, he came to give me some medicine because I wasn't feeling good. My dad replied was, oh, I wonder what it means. That's when I jumped into the conversation and told them what I saw last night. I told my parents I was so scared that I didn't even move until morning. And my mom told me, do not be afraid. He didn't harm you. And he was here for me. And I said, yeah, right, easy for you to say you didn't see a ghost behind your butt. But of course, I didn't say it to my mom. A day or two passed and my mom felt 100% better. What I don't understand is why would he make himself visible for me to see, when it was clear he came to my mom's aid. Thanks for reading my story. My story starts almost a year ago today, when we first moved into this house with our newborn son. Our son was only two weeks old when we moved to this house in Fort Lewis, Washington. At first, I assumed the weird noises, sounds of men whispering and things creaking and groaning, were just me being a paranoid new mom in a new unfamiliar house. But the whispers never stopped. I would lay in bed at night next to my husband and listen for hours. It always sounded as if it was right outside our door, by our bathroom. Eventually, I would just fall asleep listening to it. It didn't exactly bother me, it was just annoying. Then, I started seeing shadows out of the corner of my eye. I assumed that I was just exhausting myself and I just needed some rest but no amount of rest made them go away. I always saw them. But they were only in the hallway, where our two bedrooms and bathrooms are, and never anywhere else in the house. Just a flicker and then it was gone. Suddenly, out of the blue, everything stopped for no apparent reason. I was glad because I could finally relax and I didn't feel like I was going crazy all the time. And then just as suddenly, about five months ago, it started again. Not the whispers or flickers of shadows, but something entirely different. My husband had just left for deployment, and I had a friend and her husband staying with me while they were in between houses. Everything was fine until one day my friend and I were talking in my bedroom, and out of nowhere, we heard a very loud bang on the wall in my bedroom that was connected to our bathroom. We both looked at each other and slowly walked into the bathroom. Nothing had been moved or touched and nobody was in there. Later that day, we heard the bathroom cabinet door open and close. We went to look, and again, nothing appeared out of the ordinary. This went on for days, and it happened at least three to four times a day. Then one day, I was sitting on the bathroom counter doing my makeup, when the loud banging occurred again, but this time on the opposite side of the wall. The bathroom mirror shook, and it literally scared me so bad I almost fell off the counter and peed my pants. I jumped up and ran into my bedroom and asked my friend if she had heard that loud noise. She hadn't heard anything. My heart was pounding and I was afraid to go back myself, so I had her come with me. We stood in the bathroom doorway holding hands and together watched the bathroom cabinet door open, very gently and very slowly by itself. 
Needless to say, I ran for the hills and didn't dare go back in there for hours. When I finally went back in, the cabinet door was closed. This kind of stuff happened off and on for two months straight. Every day. Following that came the two most terrifying moments of my entire life. The first, I awoke with a startle in the middle of the night. My husband was still deployed and sat up for some reason, looked straight at the doorway. There was the figure of a man standing silently in the doorway. He didn't move or make a sound. I sat in my bed and stared at him for what seemed like hours. The next thing I knew, I was waking up again and the sun was up. I don't remember falling asleep again, and I don't remember what happened after just staring at him. But I do know that I was not dreaming. I woke up. I looked straight at the doorway just as I had the night before, and chills ran down my spine. And I had goosebumps that actually hurt. My skin hurt. The second event was the most terrifying. Two days after my husband got home from deployment, I was sitting on our bed, playing solitaire on the laptop. It was about 9pm and I just had put our son to bed. And my husband was in our computer room playing his game. I was minding my own business, just relaxing, when again... I had the urge to just look up at our doorway. Standing there was the same man as before. Silent, unmoving, and extremely unnerving. I thought at first it was my husband trying to play a joke on me and scare me. So I called, honey, about five times. After no answer at all, I sat there staring. I called my husband's name and the figure dropped down on the floor and crawled on its hands and knees over to my bed and in front of it, towards the side of the bed that I was on. The figure's movements were not natural. It was human, yes, but not natural. And it was very jerky. I became terrified, jumped out of the bed and ran and turned all the lights on. There's nothing there. I am crying right now recalling this last event. I have chills and goosebumps. Anyway, I lay in bed now and constantly watch the doorway and the flickers of shadows are back. And lately, we've been hearing something at night scoot across the floor. I already said that we live on military base. So I'm not sure what we're allowed to do. But my husband believes there's something in the house, as does my aunt and grandmother. I've never been one to believe in ghosts or demons, but I can't ignore it anymore. We need help. And fast. I hope you enjoyed these Washington true scary ghost stories. We're on W. We're almost done. So close to being done with our state stories. So I guess we'll see what happens after these types of state stories. I'm thinking about maybe doing urban legends from each state or a creepypasta written, you know, about each state kind of thing. I'm not sure yet, but we'll figure it out. All right. Um, the secret word of the day will be baby. Not because I'm having one, but because that new stupid movie Baby Boss is coming out. And my kid won't stop talking about it. So yeah, just type in like baby. It could be like an emoji of the baby head or it could just be like, hey baby, whatever you want, put it down below. But as always, the last video will be on the top left. The next video will be on the bottom left. All my social medias are on the screen as well as in the description box below. And remember, there's always someone or something watching you.